Hello gents, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time since I actually posted something. I've been going through stuff. I will say that's always my go-to excuse. But today we're back and we're actually doing some work. Um, I'd like to speak to you about a <coughs> an individual called Callan White. Um, you may have heard of her in the news lately. She's the transgender individual who was um, arrested as a male for rape and assault. Um, Whilst in custody, she donned her transgender persona of Callan White, um, where she wore a wig, makeup, and false breasts um, in order to go to a female prison. Now, she has also been convicted of sexually touching inmates in. I got the jail here somewhere. Um, HMP Newhall in Wakefield. Um, was been sentenced to nine and a half years for rape, sex assault, and wounding. This is the lead court was told. Um, now she has been sentenced to a male prison, and I know a lot of people are going to be upset for this because she's transgender, but I don't believe that she is. There was a report made by the um, prison service. By well, the prison service, and which the prosecution has alleged um, that he isn't actually transgender because there was, and we're quoting here, the smatterings of evidence in this case that the defendant's approach to transitioning has been less than committed. The prosecutor suggests that the reason for the lack of commitment towards transitioning is so the defendant can use a transgender persona to put herself in contact with vulnerable persons she can then abuse. Now, that's a disturbing thing. Now, this individual has been um, called manipulative a danger to, to society and there's a and there's a reason beyond what that said which is why she's done it it's because of what she admitted to her probation officer once again we're quoting the article which I will be putting into the uh, description she also admitted to probation officers she was sexually interested in children and could abuse a child and think nothing of it. Now, going to a male prison as a rapist, you're going to get... I can't say this with all certainty, obviously. But the likelihood that somebody's going to get hold of them is going to be pretty high. Because, you know, people know what other people have been sent in for. So, especially if they've been put into isolation, people are going to be thinking it's going to be pretty bad. Um, so she's going to get beaten up for being a rapist. And then when you add in the fact that it's someone who would quite happily sexually assault a child, they're going to get beaten up even worse. Okay? This is why she's done it. This is the reason why she's used this transgender persona to get her away from a situation in which she's likely to be battered daily if not more than daily and that's disgusting and there's no way that she should be sent to a female prison she isn't committed to the cause she isn't committed to going through trap she isn't committed to going through years and years of hard work and discomfort and thousands of pounds of surgery to fix what what you are she's merely done it as a oh look you can't send me here you have to send me there it's just somebody being manipulative and this doesn't in any shape or form um, bear representation on transgender people as a whole so let's have a look at how many numbers of transgender prisoners there are. Now this data isn't fully accurate uh, simply because it's very new data. 
Um, Northern Ireland hasn't released their data, um, but they don't believe they have any concerned of prisoners. Scotland, out of 7,436 prisoners at the time of this article being written, 17 are transgender. Okay, I mean, that's a very small number. Um, in England and Wales, because Wales aren't a proper country, we don't get our own figures. 125 inmates out of 85,513 were transgender and that was between March and April 2017 so it, it's well over a year old in this so it's like I said it's not fully accurate now it did count 70 over pe that period last year so there's been an increase of 55 Oh, worrying things here. It is said, quoting, 60% of the 125 transgender inmates accounted in England and Wales are serving time for sexual offences. This is roughly half, but not the full picture. Remember, those 125 transgender inmates only include people who have a prison case conference. It won't include trans people who haven't identified themselves to the prison service or who are alleged to have a gender or who are already or who already have a gender recognition certificate. Of sixty serving time for sexual offences, twenty seven were convicted of rape, plus another five for attempted rape, thirteen were convicted of possessing, distribution or making indecent images of children. 13 were convicted of sexual assault or attempted a sexual assault. 9 were, were convicted of causing or, inflict, or inciting a child under 16 to engage in sexual activity. 7 were convicted of sexual activity with a child. 7 were convicted of indecent assault or gross indecency. Those numbers add up to more than 60 because some prisoners were serving time for more than one offence. We don't know the gender of the victims or perpetrators in these cases. Now, what does this say to me? To me this says that there's something underlying here. I don't believe it's fully trans, if that makes sense. Um, most children are molested by males. I believe this to be a fact. Um, and for so many, you got seven sexual activity with a child, um, nine causing no one to child and sixteen to engage in sexual act, um, and thirteen were convicted of possessing, disputing or making decent images of children. Now a lot of those could be the same. If you take that as thirteen out of sixty, that's what maybe six percent, give or take, you know. Give or take, just over six percent. Maybe forty, maybe fifty. Hmm. Do I say six percent of them are hiding? Because I don't believe this is the This is the first case of that, where somebody's used being trans as a way of hiding from the law, hiding from other prisoners who would be more inclined to use physical violence against them, because basically these people are cowards, okay? But there is a, a bigger issue here. Should anyone who has committed assault in a sexual manner against someone of the same sex that they will be put into a prison with be allowed to be in that prison so be that someone who is 
assaulted another male or a woman who's insulted another woman or someone who is um, identified as transgender be put into a, pr a prison cell well a prison with people who are of the same sex as he's assaulted so he's assaulted, they've assaulted because you know it goes both ways um, and you have to say no I know prisoners shouldn't have the rights of free people because you know they've given up that right by committing crimes. Um, but what we do have to make aware here is they don't have the right to be attacked or assaulted or or worse. So they shouldn't be put there. So then where do we put them? Where do we? How do we deal with this issue? And it's difficult. I think perhaps one of the better options would be to have a one of the major prisons, perhaps something like um, the one in Wakefield, because I know of that one, in which there is a wing where all people who are transgender or at least tell the police service that they are transgender and have committed sexual crimes should be locked up does it um, provide a perfect answer? well of course not I'm not a politician so I don't Perhaps I'm not in the best person to speak about this, but I think that would be the safest way for everyone if we put those people who are convicted of such crimes. How we had like there's got to be wings in which people who are accused of such horrible crimes, such as rape and um, child endangerment, are kept together. But then there's always going to be that risk. I mean, if you have someone who's, like I said, a gay man who's raped another man, what do you do with them? Do you put them in alongside um, people who are of the same sex that he's assaulted? I think they do. So I think there's no clear cut answer but it's certainly something that needs to be investigated and it's certainly something which doesn't have a hard and fast rule but it's something we need to talk about and not just try to hide behind it there are problems with every single community and this is one of the problems with the transgender community is the people will either use it as a screen like White has to make their lives easier within the prison service or there are people who are genuine who are just scumbags basically and to ignore that is a failing upon of our community for the wider community and we have to be better than that so I would love to hear your comments on this because this is such a difficult topic to to broach to to find a solution which fits well for everybody. What I don't want to hear is people saying that her um, civil rights and liberties to be in a prison cell of a prison which is of the sex that she identifies as because quite clearly she's not committed the reporter said that it's likely I imagine that what she's done is donned her wig put her fake boobs on when she's got someone come to pay her a visit but the other time she hasn't bothered 
to me that's not commitment this is every day you go through this not just as and when it suits you so yes put your comments into the comment section like this video if you like it let's get shared around let's get some more people talking about this because this is what's important for the world right now okay well not the, the world but in terms of this topic the more conversations we have the closer to and the a better agreement, a better understanding all around. So until then, little gems.